This video is going to be showing you the prep I'm going to do for the new season, my version of it, um, the way I'm going to go about things. So if you want to take methods I've used uh, and do maybe more than what I've done or less suiting your needs, it's all about needs. So what you need to look at first before anything is how much time are you going to have play to play from now until Tuesday. If you've got every day off, then I would sort of... Um, advocate that you do all three characters, you prep them all up, bounty wise. If you've only got a day or two, you maybe only want to prep one or two at the most, this depends. You also need to look at how much playtime you're going to get when the re uh, DLC launches. Now it's launching obviously uh, on the Tuesday, it's a work day. Let's be real, most people are working Monday to Friday, so you might be at work. So people might not have all the time in the world to be playing, you know, um, even when the DLC comes out, they may only get four or five hours playtime. They may not get any playtime, it just depends. Some people might have the whole week off. Like for example, for me, I'm not hardcore on these bounties. I'm just playing it casual because I'm going to be playing a lot next week. So I'm fine. I've got, I've got time. I've got time on my side. I'm off work for this. That's fine. Well, I was scheduled off anyways. So I'm not taking it super hardcore, but if you don't have much time next week, then I would suggest you go hardcore on the bounties, or you should have done that already by now. This is sort of last minute video before the season comes up. And if you can take any th anything away from it, then it's good. So I'll talk about the bounties, the XP. I'll talk about a couple of weapons, because the mods have been revealed by Bungie. So this is me searching my vault. I'll show you what weapons I'm searching for, what weapons you should search for. Uh, and then materials. A couple of advices on that, that's it. So, we'll go to our Titan first, and we'll show you that. So, this is talking about the bounties first. So, you want to do this, if you've got enough time from now, there's plenty of time to do it. You only need two resets to do this. When I say that, you need one reset of bounties, and then another reset. So, if you have enough time, you could do this in two days, all three characters. Um, if it's not two days, then you've got longer than that, haven't you? So, you've got a couple of days yet to do it. Um which I've made a video on how you can solo farm a lot of these bounties. A lot of them you can, you can do like, a lot of my characters, they take about six, five hours to prep, to prep them. If I start from zero bounty to 60, 60 bounties, that will take me four to five hours. That's including weeklies, bear that in mind, because the weeklies take you more time, but the weeklies give you more XP. Now, as you can see, total quest and bounty capacity, 62 out of 63, that means this includes quests and it includes bounties. Now this character isn't fully complete. There's some last minute alterations like this. I need to get this quest chain out of my way. It's in the road at the minute. So we'll get rid of that, which I will. That'll free a space up. You can delete the um, Hammer of Proving and the Crypto uh, Lift Lure. Now if you delete the Crypto Lift Lure, I know that it will get stored in Tangled Chore for you. So if you want to pick it up again when next season starts, then you can do. With the hammer, I haven't deleted that to know that, but I would assume it's just going to be on a table somewhere where you can pick it up. Or at the abandoned quest kiosk. It's one of the two. Same thing with the splicer gauntlet, we can delete that and then re-pick it up. I'm probably not going to delete that, I'm just going to keep it on my inventory because I've got e uh, Ever in there. So that system's still in the game. I'd rather not delete that for the sake of one bounty, I really don't care. Like, as I said, as long as I've got a good amount of bounties on each character, I'm happy enough at that. So the type of bounties you want are weeklies or dailies. That is it. No repeatable bounties. Weeklies give 12,000k XP. Now, that's what the value used to be. Whether it's changed, I believe it's 12. I checked on Reddit recently, and people are saying it's 12. So it's probably 12,000 XP. That's your clan bounties. That's weekly. I've got one here. I haven't done... Like I said, I haven't really tryharded this. So I'm not too fussed. The other weekly bounties are Nightmare, you've got those, Moon, definitely good ones to do because they give you really high XP. They take a bit of time, longer than the average, but they're worth doing. You do your weeklies, that's how you start. Europa has weeklies. What else has weeklies? And Cosmodrone. But they've done away with Gambit, Gunsmith, and Crucible weeklies, then they don't exist. Also, I've recently learned that the uh, Ada 1 bounties for the armor synthesis they don't give much XP. According to Reddit, it's only 4,000. I was under the impression that they would give you weekly XP amount, and they don't. 
So I will be cashing these in and getting rid of them. So don't make the mistake I done and be grinding these bounties, you know. You don't need to. So I'll take those out of the equation. I've just learned that now as they're making the video, but that's fine. So I'll take those out and I'll just fill them in with some dailies. Now this is on the dailies. Now dailies give you 6,000 XP. Weekly give you 12. Daily give you 6. All the planets. So I what I would do is, obviously you can pick bounties up off your phone. But you can go to the planets as well. Like I, I, I just prefer to just fly to the planet. It's the quick loading times. I really don't need to use my phone. So I'll just go to each planet. I'll pick up everything daily wise. So Europa, Nessus, EDZ, Cosmodrone and Moon. Don't do Tangled Shaw. They don't give you XP. Don't do Dreaming City. They give very little XP. I think some of them do. But they give you very, very little XP. So your Moon's a hotspot. Cosmo, EDZ, Nessus, Europa. Those are your places. And then obviously you've got your strikes. Just to show you that. You know, be stocking up on those. And Gunsmith, you know, Gunsmith are excellent. You can do these bounties anywhere. But as I said, I've, I've made a video previously about how you can solo farm these bounties easily in, in, in minutes. Like, when you're in a strike playlist, it really slows it all down. Okay? Uh, so I'll just show you on my other characters what I've done with those. And then we'll come back to the Titan because I want to show you the materials. The Warlock, it's the same thing. Like I said, there's some alterations to make with my quest tabs. Like, I'm a bit messy with that, but, you know, getting this out of the way and stuff. I've got a new light thing there, I don't know why. But same, similar type of thing. But as I said, I'm not try it. I will delete these white bounties. Don't do the white ones. Just focus on everything else. The planets, clan bounties. The more clan bounties, probably the better. I should have done more, but obviously I play solo 90% of the time, so I barely get anything like that done. So that's what my walks got. I'm going to just show the hunter. And it's kind of pointless because it's the same thing, but just to show you, I've prepped all three characters. So this gives me a massive XP boost for day one. I'll probably get to artifact power seven. Including with the XP from the day I'm playing. Um, if you really try hard, you can get to Artifact Power 8 day one. They nerfed the values, they nerfed weeklies and stuff. So that was a, a huge blow. But that's the deal with the XP. So just focus on weeklies, which give 12k XP, and then dailies. But when you run out of weeklies, obviously it's one more week. So you're not going to get many weeklies if you haven't even started this. That's fine, just fill up your the rest of it with dailies. There's enough dailies to go around. After two resets, you can fill up your entire bounty log. So now we'll go to the tower, and then we'll talk about materials. I will say about um, also stock up on your mats. I can always have plenty of your you know helium filaments, uh, your spin metal leaves. I believe they're deleting sim strand, so you know that's going to be deleted. Um, but always stock up on your um, the planet materials, you know the etheric spiral, dust light shard. Always stock up on that stuff because obviously they sell that for the upgrade modules. Now you need plenty of upgrade modules, so I'll show you that. Which obviously you're going to want 25. It caps out at 25, so I would just go to the gunsmith. Pretty simple. Enough with that. What do you think? And then. Like, I might not do it today, I'll do it at some point, but I'll just stock up completely on 25 upgrade modules. Yeah? Uh, and that's going to be having me... That, that means I can upgrade my stuff as I go, you know, because obviously power level matters in endgame stuff. I've, already, I've always got infusion fuel for stuff like that. That's one thing you want to do. The next thing you want to concern, be concerned about is your masterwork cores and your descendant shards. Now I've got, like I said, 1200 cores. I've spent a lot of cores this season because of Vault of Glass. I've masterworked a lot of weapons and armor from there. I've got a good, I got a lot of good stuff from it. So I've spent a lot of cores this season, but just keep an eye on your cores. You can get cores from pretty much anything. Um, even when you're handing in tokens, which that's another thing I'm going to come on to. So Vanguard tokens are being done away with. So you need to look at how many tokens you've got and then literally just spam it. 90% of what you get from him is going to be deletable. But do keep an eye on any god rolls uh, that you get. If you do, like for example the sniper, you may get a sniper. I don't think you can inspect this engram anymore. No, you can't. But you need to get rid of those because they're doing away with token system. 
Uh, I believe it's just for Zavala. I'm not sure if it's Gunsmith. I don't think so. But I've got a lot of Gunsmith tokens still as well. Um, so that's pretty basic with that. Ascended Shards and Enhancement Prisms. Obviously, we get these from mainly, um, you know, Grandmaster, Night Falls, stuff like that. So you want to be stocked up at least, I would say, 10 shards in your inventory. I would discourage you from storing Ascendant Shards in the Postmaster. So I've got 50 Prisms here and 3 shards. Now, when I'm playing in the new season, gonna, I'm going to be playing for a long time. Okay? And it, it's really easy to forget about your Postmaster. Especially if you're playing with full inventories, which you will be, because you'll be getting new gear. You'll be like, what's this weapon? What's that weapon? What's this... Stasis legendary weapon, what's this new armor piece? And you forget, and then you could easily forget these mats. So I... It is good to have them there, I guess. But I would rather invest them into some armor. So I'm going to look at some of the exotics I've got in my vault. And I'm going to see where I can masterwork. I'd rather masterwork stuff than lose. Potentially lose that piece. That's just how I play. So I'll look through my armor, see in my vault, see what we got. You know, see what exotics, you know, for example, lots of really good rule, gateway artist, 23 recov, 12 discipline, not bad at all, like really good, it's worthy of a masterwork. You know, I've got exotics all over the place, god rolls all over the place, and things are getting adjusted, so I'm, I'm going to look at all that and make sure that I spend the shards that are in the um, postmaster. That's materials out of the way, now we're looking at weapons, so the mods are this, unstoppable sidearm, unstoppable pulse, um, then you've got Unstoppable Fusion Rifle, Unstoppable Linear Fusion, they're, they're the same mod, in with it together. Then you've got Anti-Barrier Scout, and potentially Overload Sword, I believe. Although they haven't specifically stated that, I don't think, but I think there is Overload Sword. But again, I don't know if that's confirmed. So those are the weapons you want to look at in your vault, because that's what matters. So I'm instantly in my vault, and like, right, what have I got? The so Pulse Rifle... Let's look. I've got a chat and bone here. Range, find a rampage. Range, range, range matters uh, so much on likes of your pulse rifles and art rifles. Why? Because in Grandmasters, you need to do as much damage as you can to those trash mobs. Because trash mob adds, as we know, are really tanky. So the less range drop off you have on a weapon, the better it is. Rampage isn't very good in Grandmasters. So this weapon's good. It's got ricochet rounds, rampage. It's a good option, but there's better options. I've looked at that. Uh, I'm not too concerned with scouts, not even snipers. I'm looking at all my autos. So I've got a Zen Moment Rampage Horror Story. It's range. This is what I'm looking at from an auto rifle. What range stat has it got? This range on this auto is average. This is an average auto rifle. This, uh, this auto rifle will perform very good in master content or below. But below, on to GM level, this auto rifle is not good. I can show you way better auto rifles. This one's a little bit better because it's got a masterwork range and it's got osmosis. Now this means I can make this auto rifle stasis. I can have a stasis auto rifle. Now people are forgetting about that and there's going to be stasis shields. So osmosis is a top tier PvE perk. You heard it here first. It is good. People say it's rubbish but it's not. For solo play sometimes you need it. Osmosis. Then we look at sidearms I'm not going to cover because why use a sidearm when I can use a ranged weapon like a pulse rifle? In GMs, because that's where I'm really focusing on, Masters and GMs, the sidearm isn't really going to excel. Sidearms are good in low-end content because they, tr they, they truck through ads and it's great. You enjoy the game. But when it gets to GMs, you're not enjoying sidearms. So I won't cover any sidearms in this video. Bad Juju, it's a pulse rifle, it's an amazing weapon, use it, you, you, there may be chances to use this weapon, which I often do use it. What else we got? So this one, this one is one of my best art rifles I own. Okay, so, because it's got four times the charm, arm piece and rounds, and look at its range stat. This means I can take a champion from exceptional ranges. This is a very, very good exceptional art rifle. The problem is it's very rare, and you're not going to be able to get it and it might be it might be available the next um, event of this nature, but if if it's not, I don't know. There's other options that I can cover. Another Bray Tech. I've got a Vorf times Vorpal, absolute god rule. Its range is less, but its base range is really good. It's a sort of a slow fire or rifle, which is sort of what I prefer. Now this range has even higher multi kill clip, really high damage buff. So 
So I'm looking at all these weapons that I've got. Let's see what else. So Bastion has unstoppable built within it. Okay, they changed it. Um, there we go. So it staggers unstoppables. So it's always an option for you. This weapon can create cells, the seven seraphs carbine. Four times the charm, four per weapon. This means this is very good for breaking shields. Its range is really good for what it is, because it's a vision frame weapon. It's really good. Especially if I put a backup mag or even major spec. If you put a major spec in, you will break a champion shield um, easier. It might be only two, three, four bullets uh, less to take, but it still sometimes can really help you. For when you're soloing a Grandmaster, your all rifle needs to be good. Yeah, because obviously we're going to have an auto rifle season, so you need to have good auto rifles, and this one's good. It makes cells. Cells are getting nerfed, but they still may be usable. We don't know. I would say that the warman cells are going to be half as effective as they are now, which means they may still be decent because they're exceptional now, so they're going to be average. So, so warman cell builds, you're still going to see them be used. So keep an eye on your carbines. You can still get it in the game now. What else have we got? And nothing here. Obviously, you've got uh, no time to explain. It's an exceptional weapon. Very good at what it does. But again, it's only if there's unstoppable champions because it's unstoppable pulse. So this is the auto rifle I want to talk about. This is an exceptional auto rifle again for GMs, especially if you're on your own solo. Look at the range stat. Range stat is the very most important stat for the auto rifle for me as a solo player. I don't care that the stability is bad, because this weapon's stable anyways. I may even make a video about um, all rifle high impact autos. High impact autos are the way to go when you want to break shields on champions, and that's what it's for. I have overflow, so when I pick up a special or heavy, it will reload it beyond its capacity. So I, I can't mind how much it goes to. I think it's like 70 bullets. But an auto rifle like this, that is a lot. Uh, you could probably break two shields within that amount of magazine really good false promises is one of the best art rifles in in slot in the connect slot so make sure you're checking your rules cool denial it's a, an exceptional post rifle make sure you get one the gunsmith selling one right now that's all much i can really say about it high impact weapons are really good in gms i impact anything just because they have um i believe they have high caliber rounds built in them okay so it staggers the enemy, right? Just like explosive payload, so it's very good. Uh, pulse here, not, nothing special. All rifles, so Chroma Rush is super popular right now. Um, I don't know if I have it on me, I don't. It's on one of my characters. Chroma Rush is exceptional, but it isn't good. It isn't going to be good. Look at the range stat. Rapid fire frame autos are the telltale uh, sign of what they are. This gun is for ad clear, where ads are really weak. If you're on a Lost Sector, it's a perfect weapon for Lost Sector because you can go through it really quick. Especially with Subsistence Rampage, which I do have that role. It's Masterwork, just on another character. I haven't got it on me to show you, but this is one of the best all rifles in the game for middle game content. For end game, no. Don't be using Chroma Rush, it just hasn't got the range. There'll be some, one, there'll be some roles with higher range, but its range stat base isn't high. Even with the best range perks possible, you're still not going to have good enough range on this weapon. Chroma Rush isn't going to be as good as what you think it's going to be for Grandmaster. Um, so what else have we got in terms of weapons? Fusion Rifles, so I'll talk about that. High Impact Reserves is a top tier perk for fusions. Better than Reservoir Burst. The reason why Reservoir Burst isn't that very good is because it, it only procs off one shot. Now it synergizes with auto and holster like Loaded Question used to be, but we don't have Loaded Question anymore. It's Sunset. And when they brought back No Composure, its its synergy isn't there. Fin Frenzy doesn't synergize very well with the um, Reservoir Burst because um, that's meant for ads. Fin Frenzy's got nerfed hard and the reload's not even that good on it. The No Composure isn't that good, but it has got high impact reserves on it like this fusion here which i got this one from last wish high impact reserves under pressure i mean that's more pvp that's fine liquid coils is what you want for the higher impact you want to go for impact damage that's how i go for it and then you want to spec for a bit of range on your fusion this fusion's not the best but it's a arc fusion if i need it it's fine it's a good one let's see what else we've got another arc fusion so you see the range difference here look at this 
this fusion again is going to be better for GMs um, compared to the last wish one. It's got all on holster this one, so really good. Uh, I'm not here to tell you the god rolls on it. I'm just showing you what fusions I'm looking at in my vault, really. Back to our rifles. So we've got nine hunger. Nine hunger is gonna be really decent. It's gonna be a bit better than Chroma Rush, but obviously it's in the energy slot. It's got a higher base range. That overall, its stats are really good. Handling's really good. Got a good reload. This is overflow rampage, but I've got subsistence rampage, which this roll is gonna be really good. Subsistence is amazing, but in GMs it won't be as useful because you can't. It's going to take you a mag to clear that ad. It's not going to be as good that way. But again, let's look at range stuff. Uh, overflow is going to be useful because anytime you're going to have a magazine, more than enough to 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 break a shield. That's what it's all about. So other weapons that we have, we have over our rifle here. Again, rapid fire frame arrows. I've told you already, they're not going to cut it in GMs. So that's another one there. Fusion rifle here. This is one of the worst fusion rifles in the game. It is from uh, Garden, the red. Rubbish. Look at the range stat. Look at what it does. This is like a short range, rapid fire frame fusion. Again, it just doesn't do the damage that you want it to do for a fusion. No good. This is a high impact pulse. I've told you how good high impact pulses are. They have high caliber rounds built within them. They're amazing. High impact reserves. This this pulse could be decent. If ever I need a void pulse in an eyefall, I'll be checking out to see how good that is. We've also got overload bow. So overload bow, you're looking for um, rolls like this. Arches, tempo, verbal weapon. Point of the stag is a specific roll. You can just select it. There's no random rolls to it. So this is one of the best arc bows in the game on champions because you want to consistently stagger champions over time. Okay. I'll talk more about bows as we go, as more bows pop up in my vault. Um, Tommy's matchbook, don't touch it. It's just not going to do it for you. This fusion pretty decent. It's probably middle of the road. A lot of people claim for it to be the best fusion in the game. We'll see. In GMs it won't be. But this roll I've got is pretty nice. All on host the demolitionist. I'll try it out. But again, I'm not like, you know, super impressed with it. This is an interesting roll. I'll try it out. Disruption break may work well depending on what I've got in my connect slot. That's it's a solar fusion option. That's the main thing. That's a pulse, it's your standard. I believe it does have disruption break, so it'll work well. Although saying that there's no anti by a pulse, it's not gonna work well for pretty much anything. Moving on now, so solar or rifles, this is where we you know sort of moving to this. Now, RDKs is a really good auto rifle, but again, it's rapid fire frame. It's going to struggle getting them shield breaks, but I do have a Vorbal on it, so this one might work. Some rolls will work, some of them won't. Uh, it just depends on your range stat, what perks you've got. I haven't got a good roll on it, if I'm being honest, for end game stuff. This fusion rifle was specific to a C, uh, to the Christmas event. This has all lone holster, favorite player. Two of my favorite perks. This is going to be high impact, amazing for what I want to do with it. This is going to be one of my go-to fusions for next season. So I'm going to be using that and it's void. This again is precision frame. Precision frame and high impact frame are really good. Uh, this has Vorpal weapon, fear and frenzy. In my opinion probably better than null composure. So I'm going to be using this one a lot. You know I'm going to be checking out all my rolls. And then we move on to see what we've got. So we've got a void bow option, imperial needle. This does not come with explosive head, but Frenzy is a flat buff when you're surrounded. To be honest with you, I used it last season for champions and it worked really good. This is an amazing bow. It just works probably as well as explosive head. It just doesn't have that additional stagger. As long as you're consistent with your bows, you'll do well with a bow with Frenzy on it. So that's decent as well. All rifles, back to that. Shadow Price, Kill and Wind Disruption Break. This is going to work amazing with kinetic weapons. I've kept that for that reason. You, can, you look at the range. Shadow Price is going to be a monster next season. You can see the range on it. Surplus one for all. One for all is an amazing GM perk because you can hit three targets, get a buff. No kill is required. That's amazing. This is this perk is better than Rampage. So keep an eye on one for all. Amazing. Another um, one for all roll. Again, but less range on that one. Uh, now we've got some adept rolls. We've got fourth times the charm, which is amazing. Unrelenting is decent. It has some utility. You get health back when you kill a champion. 
Which that may happen because you're using your rifle and a champ. Amazing. Fourth times the charm as well keeps proccing the magazine. I can put a de big ones in it so I can deal extra damage to tanks, bosses, champs, or yellow bars. Really good. It's going to be a monster. Overflow fresh. That's okay. Roll. Could be better. And then we move on. Again, I'm missing sidearms out. Another fusion rifle. This is decent. Auto and holster. High impact reserves. This is probably one of the best rolls you can get on this fusion. It's decent. The range that isn't there, but... I would say it's middle of the road, it's pretty good for what it is. Pulse rifles here, again it's just a legendary pulse. Teku's divination is going to be for overload. So this boy is amazing, it can make war mine cells. War mine cells are getting nerfed, but it does consistent damage to champions and you can over, uh, consistently stagger them, or even on GMs. So be using Teku's, but there is a better bow than that, which is the um, Void Bow, which I'll talk about at the end I guess another solar fusion this one's really good because it's got a vorpal so I kept it for that this one's not really good I'll probably delete it um, grid skip it if you've got a good one I guess you could use that for next season looking at other rolls so a plug one's going to be a fusion that people are going to use because you can put a dead big ones in it so I haven't really got any good rolls on it kickstart is a terrible terrible perk I can't tell you right now at hand what the god roll is I guess if it does roll with high impact reserves, then that would be one I would like to use. But I don't seem to have one. Uh, look at your rolls. You preferably want liquid coils here. And then, you know, some sort of damage burst. Reservoir burst is going to give you that. It's not the best fusion in the world. I, I, I think there's better fusions than this. The only thing about it is you can put a death big ones in it. And that is a game changer, I guess. Depending on what nightfall it is. The number, this is like Euro's Gift, if you remember that auto. It hasn't got the range I would like, but this rule isn't really good. I, think I can up the range a little bit. It's decent. Um, these 450s are quite like precision frames. You know, they're better than the rapid fires, at least. Um, and that's literally it. And lastly, the bow. I don't have it on me. It's on a different character. I'll just quickly show you that. So this is going to be the best bow that you're going to have next season. This is better than Tiku's. Because the poison arrow damage counts as overload rounds to the champ. You can continue to overload the champion. It will be the best bow in the game uh, for that. Also, there is the um, one bow that I don't have on me. Let's go to the um, collections quickly. Should have really had it because it's one of the best bows in the game. It is. Biting Winds is a good one. Kinetic as long as you get explosive head on it like so but that's going to be a kinetic option whispering slabs are a kinetic option because uh, that rolls with explosive accurate um accurate redemption explosive head as well and then arsenic bite now arsenic bite can re uh, roll with explosive head explosive head so you can um explosive head da uh, dragonfly sorry so the dragonfly on a bow is stronger than what it is on a scout hand cannon or rifle because of the impact damage on the bow, the firefly, the dragonfly is based on the initial impact of the weapon itself. That's why dragonfly is so effective on bows. Explosive head is even more effective. Stagger enemies, continually overload champions. It's one of the best bows in the game and it's an arc bow. It's as good as the iron banner one I showed you. Uh, it's up there. Tyranny of heaven is a solar bow. This can make war mine cells if you have explosive head. Even dragonfly I guess would do it. You want explosive head on this bow, it will be the best one for you, I just don't have the roll. I do have one on my other characters, um, with like something like Rampage, it does the job, but again, explosive head would be much, much better. So just check your rolls if you've got that bow. Um, but that's the information on that. Um, obviously there's going to be other weapons that's going to be more useful to you. So Linear fusion rifles we haven't talked about, I've got Freddy Needle, you can use that for unstoppable. And they're very, very, very good on ammo. This weapon can hold up to 20 bullets. Okay. Um, that's really good, huge. Sleeper Simulant, I don't have it on me. That's going to be a useful weapon. Obviously, Xenophase is getting a buff. Machine guns. i quickly talk about that, but I don't want this video any longer than this, to be honest. So, machine guns are going to get the buff. So, Xenophase is a no-brainer. You're going to want to use that. Um, Xenophase is as good as it is, but... It's going to be even better, depending on what they do. If it's a precision multiplier only, Xenophage won't benefit. 
if it's just an overall damage boost, then it will. It's still going to be good to use anyways. 1k voices is a heavy legendary fusion rifle. You will be able to use this on unstoppable champions. So that's one to note. It just struggles with ammo. Sleeper Simulant is going to be much better to you than 1000, in my opinion. But we'll see how it turns out. Uh, machine gun wise, I've got a solo one here, I guess. Avalanche, Autoload and Vorpal. It's a good rollout. It's really good. Check all your rolls on your machine gun. 7-7 seven, seven saw is obviously going to be one of your go-tos. I've got all my god rolls are on my other characters. I'm sorry about that, but I've got a couple of god rolls here to show you. Um, but generally, that's about it. I mean, the Shattered Cypher isn't that good. I would check on if you can get Corrective Measure. Corrective Measure is going to be a much better option to you. Uh, again, do I have a character? No, I don't. But... That's going to be a good weapon. Now I'm just moving quickly on to swords. So Overload. Anything with Whirlwind Blade. Relentless Strikes Whirlwind Blade is going to do you nice. Anything you can get with those two perk combinations. Just check all your swords for that. It's a no-brainer with swords. Fallen Guillotine does well. It got nerfed. It's still decent. You can use Lament for barriers. That's going to do you well. Keep it on his edge. Keep a God Roll uh, knocking around. Surrounded really good. Any damage boost um, perks you can get to swords will help you. Yeah, flash count is good, but it's situational. Counter strike's good, but it's situational. Whirlwind Blade, I recommend over any of those perks. Uh, slideways on the Shattered Cypher is really good. You can slide and you never have to reload. Exceptional weapon. Um, this weapon may be, turn out to be really, really good. Especially this roll. 109, 110 bullets, very similar to the old Arc Machine Gun Gambit one we used to use. Sort of similar handling to that, just hasn't got the boost of damage that that does. But I've got Surrounding on it. Don't have to reload it, really good. But that's my cover fully of the prep that you should do for weapon-wise, materials, XP for the next season. Hope you enjoy, thank you.